are back in the studio. Welcome back to the show right here on Shock TV, episode number 96, kicking off the 2015-16 season. And thank you so much for spending some time with us today. My name is Matt Carter. We're very stoked to introduce our musical guest right in behind me. We have Tora Lee, not to be confused with Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee makes great pastries. Tora Lee plays some amazing music. We also have Alex Wickett who probably is quite good at croquet from what I hear. Anyway, these two singer-songwriters from the Central Vancouver Island area are gonna play some great tunes for us today, and we'll meet them in an interview later on this hour. Also, uh, very pleased to welcome back to the Shaw TV studios, we have Gord Fuller. He's a Nanaimo City Councillor, as well as a board chair of the Nanaimo 710 Club. He's here with an event organizer, Dennis Osterkamp, and they're gonna be talking about some stuff going down with the 710 Club here a little bit later on. We'll be talking with Matthew Hoffman for that. Also, Anna is here. She'll be talking about two festivals going on. She can talk to Shlema Gant about the Art de Carnival. Welcome, Shlema, back to the studios. As well, we're going to follow that up with a look at the Cultural Heritage Festival with Representative Mark Penny. So you could say we brought in a penny for his thoughts, as it were. Anyways, now I'm not really much of a morning person whatsoever, but i got to say one of the best things in the world is an amazing breakfast. And an amazing breakfast is even better when it's there for a good cause. For with that, we're going to bring back Signe Madden, a great friend of the show on Shy TV. She's with the United Way here in Central North Vancouver Island, talking about the United Way's kickoff breakfast and the new campaign they have coming up for this year. How can it help? How can you take part? Well, stay tuned. Also, for those of you thinking about starting a blog or maybe improving a blog you have already, well, we brought in WordPress expert George Plumley here to talk about WordPress, a great uh, blogging format, as well as some security things you can do with that. Kate Bergen will be handling the interview on that. But first, to kick things off, Anna, who is arguably one of our most energetic hosts we have here, she's going to be talking to a great nonprofit about some very interesting energy related developments as well. So it's about to get electric. Sit on down. It's the show right here on Shaw TV. My guest today is Dave Needs, and talking about energy, we will be talking about energy. We are talking about solar power, and Dave is the general manager of Gabe Energy, and he's here to talk to us a little bit about that, and then we are going to see how solar panels actually work. I'm excited about this one. Thank Welcome, you. Dave. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Gabe Energy. Well, Gabe Energy is a nonprofit society. We formed it about 18 months ago on Gabriel Island. And mm -hmm. our intention is to demystify solar, to make mm -hmm. it easier for people to understand, and also to help bring costs down and help people right. get more involved in the solar revolution, particularly the do it yourself market, people who want to get involved and put hands on kind of things. And it's, it's a money saving, but. I mean, it's also great to be able to use our natural environment. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, 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 you taking, you're, take, you're taking the sunlight directly yeah. and converting it right into the energy of your home. You're not using fossil fuels, you're That's not, right. right? So it's part of the green revolution, and solar is just growing by it's, leaps and bounds it globally. It's, it's also in North America, and British Columbia, we've tripled our, our solar in the last two years. So wow. we're on that curve as well. That's a good curve to be yeah, on. It is, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And you brought some great things. Now, this well, is. Well, this. Explain to us a little bit about uh, normally, the process. Everybody's familiar with the front side of a solar panel, course, right? Yeah. All those black squares or whatever. So today I'm going to take you behind the panel, so to okay. speak. And, uh, <laughs> I like that behind the panel. Yeah. And <laughs> so I brought some bits and pieces, and I'm going to try and show over the next few minutes how uncomplicated it is at this scale to put these pieces together. So and I could put it together. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, it'd be, <laughs> okay. you may be more talented. I don't know. I, I could get in trouble here. But anyway, so uh, basically what you have to do is determine what your surface is, what your roof surface, right? Right. And once okay. you've done that and you've had some... Meaning surface, meaning the actual, is it asphalt? Is it If it's metal, asphalt, if it's, yeah, okay. asphalt, me right. metal, yeah. raised seam is the yeah. most popular these days, right. right? And so, but it doesn't matter. These systems are designed for whatever roof surface roof. you want, right? Okay, perfect. So the basic element is a rail like this, which the panels mount on. Right. So in order to just try and demonstrate a little bit how this works, okay. uh, I'm just going to use, that's all the tools I'm going to need. That's it? To do this. Oh, yeah. See, I could <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so these, uh, these little roll nets uh, slip in here, one like that. Now how much does a panel uh, give out of energy? Well, it, it, uh, this is a particular one is a 250 watt panel. Okay. Uh, that means uh, two amps at 110 volts. 
So that would, you know, it'd run a computer, run some lighting, run some LED lighting, whatever. And, and the more panels you have, the more energy. More you, yeah, a typical, right? a typical home in British Columbia would run on about 30 of these. Wow. You know, uh, given, given uh, averages. And 30 of those, they'd be about that size too, Yeah, the, right? each one of these is five foot six. I'm, st I'm not metric anyway, uh, too, <laughs> too old for that. But so this is five, six by 40 inches, weighs about 42 pounds. Right. So there's no uh, bylaw issues, no roof loading issues. It's not, you just have to have things inspected by the electrical inspector, but right. you don't have to have any, anything special Good to done know. to your building that way. No, because they just sit on the roof, right? Yeah, yeah. Mind you, this is all part of mounting it onto the roof. This correct? is this is called the racking system. The racking right? system. Okay. So, because you want it to be secure. I mean, we do have high winds here. Well, <laughs> the, at least at our house, we the, do. The uh, the wind loading factor here is about 60 miles an hour. That's the okay. provincial average, and these are these are in good excess of that. We can we can get stiffer mounts if you need them, which. Uh, will exceed those. Meaning, for example, if you're in a high, like if you live Yeah, on. I've got one installation that's out at the south end of Gabriola. He's on the top of a 30-foot cliff okay. looking straight down Trincomalee Channel. So he's going for 85 mile an hour wind protection. Right, of course, makes sense. I so, would too. If yeah. I would. So that's the basic system there. Okay. That sits on your roof, right? Okay. Now this, this so that's one's- like your base? This one's designed for that raised seam that profile, the west coast raised seam, which yep. is very popular. But you can have uh, screws go through here, you can have other kinds of clamping systems, whatever you need, it's really right. flexible, right? Okay, and it mounts right so on So it there. mounts right on there. Okay. And then the other thing that, this is the magic, the magic box. The magic box. <laughs> this takes the, 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 elect the electricity from the solar panel, turns it into 240 volts, wow. which goes into your home load panel. Excellent. And you, I'll show, I'll show right. later how that, how that gets hooked and up. Speaking so. of later, we will be coming back. Right now, okay. we're just going to take a quick break and we're going to go over to Matthew on the main set. Okay. Hi, I'm Matthew. I'm here with uh, Gord and uh, Dennis from uh, the 710 Club. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. Um, Gord, so I'd like to, um, what exactly is the 710 Club? When did it start yeah. and how does it help people? Well, this is our 30th year in operation for the 710 Club. It's a breakfast program for anybody in need. Anybody could walk in there and get a free hot breakfast and a bag lunch. Uh, started in 1985, and it was originally set up because of the need for children going to school. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we've actually seen a drop in the number of children that come to the 710 Club but a huge increase in the need for others coming to the Oh, good. Okay. Awesome. So we're getting more people from the community coming that are in need? More well, yeah, it's not really a good thing, but, yeah. uh, you know, it's a good thing that it's there to feed people, you know, low-income people, homeless people. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. It's, it's nice that we have something like that in our community, right? Yes. And then we have some support. Um, I understand you guys are in need of uh, some volunteers. Uh, we always need volunteers. Volunteers come and go, and they really enjoy what they do. Uh, we don't require people to come in and line up. They sit mm -hmm. down. It's like a restaurant in a way. And they would sit at a table, and the volunteers would come up and serve them and you know, ask them what they'd like, soup or porridge and coffee, tea, or water. Awesome. So while they're there, they can be, be of help and clean up and serve as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. one of the primary duties of the volunteers is to actually serve, um, you know, doing dishes. Uh, there's a number of different opportunities. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, are you guys in need of uh, board members? And I understand you wanted to go over that? Yes, uh, we could always use board members. Um, some of the board members have been with the 710 Club for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, I've been on the board for 11 years now, since uh, 1994, or 2004, sorry. Uh, but yeah, we're always looking for board members, and if people are interested, they can contact us, uh, you know, through our website, Nanaimo710club.com, or phoning us at 250-714-0917. Awesome, that's great. Um, yeah, I know myself, mm -hmm. I'd love to be, uh, be able to volunteer myself and be a part of the community, right? Um, yeah. That's great to, um, 
to know that we have a, we have something like this to yeah. uh, be of service to the people that are in need, right? And especially, it would be nice to see more children coming, right? Well, no, it's actually a good thing that more kids aren't coming. Is so, it? Oh, okay. Yeah, the schools are doing a far better job now in feeding kids in need and feeding kids in general. Good. So that takes some of the pressure off us. Yeah, well, that's awesome. It is. Um, I understand you guys have a fundraiser coming? Yeah, and this is why um, Dennis came along today, and Dennis is going to talk about uh, uh, what we're hoping to be as our primary fundraiser mm -hmm. as we move on, and this is our second annual, so I'll turn it over to Dennis. Awesome. Thanks, Dennis. Gordon. Yeah, as Gordon said, it's our second annual. We did this first uh, run, walk out hunger in Nanaimo event last year. We do it on Thanksgiving weekend to uh, tie in with the feasting and uh, the food atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing it again this year at Westwood Lake Park on October the 11th. And we're uh, hoping we'll get lots of people to come out. It should be a fun morning. It's at, uh, this is registration will be at 9. The event, the walk run will actually start at 10. It should be lots of fun. There'll be some prizes to be won by some of the participants and uh, we'll raise some money for the club. We we did pretty good last year and uh, we want to do better this year with our awesome. walk and keep building on it. Awesome. Well, I do want to thank you both. Uh, we are out of time, but I'm glad we could uh, discuss what the, uh, the Seventh Tech Club and how people can get involved and what it really means. Um, we're going to go over and throw it to uh, Matt. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you so, so much, Matthew. And uh, thanks as well, uh, Gordon Dennis, for coming down to the show and all the uh, amazing work you guys are doing. Really a great benefit to the community here in Nanaimo. All right. It's time now uh, to go from uh, Food for Thought to a little music for the heart and meet our musical guests. We have over here Tora Lee and Alex Wickett. Thank you guys so much for being here on the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's great to hear. So um, now... You guys were telling me before, before we were shooting here, that primarily you guys were uh, solo performers. Now okay. you're doing some duo work. So just like that embarrassing question from mom at the dinner table, so how'd you guys meet? Um, well, we uh, were uh, both taking vocal lessons from the same uh, uh, lady, um, Shelly Beeson. She does uh, vocal coaching, guitar, piano lessons, and artist development in uh, Coombs at the Sound Garden. Oh, right, that's the, is a little property sort of close to the rodeo? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, a great vocalist, um, wonderful person to, uh, to be working with. So, yeah. um, so with that, that's where you sort of recent uh, past was. Where did you guys uh, you talk individually about where you started playing music? Um, music for, for me was um, um, a childhood thing. I would say that I was, um, I always enjoyed singing, but um, the piano uh, was uh, was forced on me, as uh, as it is on many. And um, um, uh, the piano was no longer uh, in our household uh, once I was uh, 11 or 12, so I stopped playing. And um, um, I, I ended up seeing uh, Shelley a, a few years back. It was something I always sort of wanted to do, pursue singing. And um, and uh, she asked me if I could play any instrument, and I said I could probably. <laughs> find my way around a piano again uh, 15 years later so so uh, that's where we started and um, and here we are so Nice. And Tora, what about you? When's the first time you picked up a guitar? Uh, I was probably about 15 um, in high school watching my friends play guitar and thinking oh I uh, I want to play so I picked it up and I realized it was a lot harder than uh, uh, originally thought um, and then I always liked singing and um, I just slowly started playing in front of groups of friends at parties and you know everybody was really encouraging and finally like now, I just, uh, about a year ago, I started taking vocal lessons with Shelly, and about a year ago, I started playing live um, by accident, but yeah. By accident, so what was, what was the um, accident? What was the I was supposed accident? to sing harmonies with a friend of mine, uh, Hazen Sage, and he got an injury on his finger, so uh, the, th the show got thrown to me instead. So uh, I had two days to pre prepare 45 minutes worth of music. Oh wow! Yeah. Nice and congratulations to take that. I know Hazen's an amazing musician as well. So yeah, great stuff. friend so too. Yeah, exactly. Nice yeah. job. So, so with that, so again, now solo stuff together. Um, what sort of songs do you guys like to play? Is it a bit of a fight to decide what songs to play, or mm -hmm. is it pretty collaborative? I, I think it's. Uh fairly easy for us to find things we like um, yeah. it's a pretty uh, there's a pretty broad range of things that we both like but uh, there's some there's some common ground there for sure so all 
All right, well, let's get into some of these tunes here real quick to hear somebody will be doing some solo stuff as well as playing together. Um, but where can people see you guys perform? That's the last question I'd like to ask you. Um, we are uh, September 22nd. We are at the Dingy Dock and um, playing together. And uh, and then we were also uh, we're going to play a solo set uh, each uh, for a show at that Soundgarden in Coombs um, on uh, October the 17th. So uh, you can catch us there, too. Awesome, great stuff. All right, so let's get into some music here. Uh, Tori, I believe you're going to play a solo tune here uh, mm -hmm. called Last November. Mm -hmm. All right, let's hand it over to you. Mm -hmm. Totally, Alex, we thank you guys so much for being here. More great music on the show right here on Shaw TV. <coughs> in the dark Cradle me in the stillness Muffled song, can't you hear it? Broken body, weary eyes Suffocated in skin Teach me to Can't you hear them? Broken body. Lee, that was beautiful. What a beautiful voice. Lovely. Today my guest is Shalima Gant and she is the president of the Nanaimo African Heritage Society. Welcome. Thank you. And you are here to talk to us about we're celebrating cultural days. Celebrating cultural days once again. Excellent. And we have some really exciting things going on this year. We're doing 
Monster, we're meeting Frozen Meets Monster High. <laughs> okay. And that is for the kids, and that's on September the 26th. Right, okay. And we got a lot of hosted things going on that day because uh -huh. we're going to go from Frozen Meets Monster High into our masquerade for grown ups at night, oh. Arts de Cannaval. Arts de Cannaval. Arts de Cannaval. So Monster High is such a wonderful event. I didn't realize how popular it was with the young kids. Oh, yeah, they love it. And Frozen. Oh, Frozen. So they get to meet their favorite cartoon characters. They get to take pictures. They get to um, wonderful gift bags. It gives them a chance to dress up and come out and have a lot of fun. Bring out the kid in you. Bring your kids, have fun as well. And get dressed up. And get dressed up. Because it's all about it's costumes. It's all about costumes. It's a big costume party. All about masks. <laughs> See? Masks. I love that. And that's what Carnival that. is all about. All too. about it, yes. Dress up, come out. There's going to be a murder mystery. The dinner starts at 6 o'clock. That sounds like fun. And a murder mystery, as well as you get to dress up and have dinner. How much fun is that? It's a lot of fun. And we're going to have lots of co we're going to have lots of entertainment. So we're trying to create a cotton club effect, a I circus it. as it were, you know? Lots of vendor right. tables, lots of painting and artists to look at. No, you said that these are two separate events. Two separate events right. but the same okay. day same at day. the same place. Okay. Bowen Complex. Okay. And it starts from 12 to 3 for the wow. children. For the children. Okay. And then for the afternoon for the event in the because evening. You said it's a dinner. It's a dinner. Right. So dinner is served at 7, but the doors open at 6. At 6. Yeah. Excellent. Wow. Can you tell me a little bit about the Nanaimo African Cultural Society? Well, the, Na the Nanaimo <laughs> African Heritage Society has, start, has been formed since 19... 19, uh, way back, <laughs> sorry, 1991. Okay. Yeah, and, and, um, and so it started at the university, and it's just to bring awareness to the African culture and the mosaic of the, the contributions of pioneers of African descent. That's right. And we share that with the whole community yes, as inclusiveness it is. It is. to our community and to show the rich contributions that have been made by our wonderful pioneers and opening the door for all black people and for all of us to share all of our history together. And have some fun together. Yeah, <laughs> and come out and get some of that tasty food that we prepare for these events. And you, not for this one, but for the masquerade. For the children, we will be serving them lunch, so they will get some nice oh, goodies okay. for lunch. Okay. We'll try to make it healthy as possible, but it's ghoulish, right? So, so oh, fun stuff. <laughs> good. Well, 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 well let's have some of the ghoulish. Got to make sure that they get to get some good vegetables. <laughs> because and, it's the monster. Yeah, it's the monster high ghoulish. Right? ghoulish yeah. Frozen is it's so ghoulish. Frozen, <laughs> frozen is the, you know princess and <laughs> pop proper, and so we're gonna put it all together. Now this this Venetian art de carnival. Yes. Sounds really great. So there's a dinner and dance. A now, murder paint, mystery, no, dinner, you, dan no, dance. Now you mentioned that there's artisans and painters. Yeah, we so try to have people there so that they have something to look at. They come in, there'll be artists in there. We are looking for more vendor tables. If anybody has something that they think would fit in with the theme of Arts to Cannaval. Right, and you know, they can contact mad, they you. They can contact us. Yeah, and we have your, your Office website number and the our, email address okay. as well, right. if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. And then we have tickets. At several and, places. And where do you get the tickets for these? So events? you could get tickets at the National, oh, is it a Natural Spa that's on Port Place Mall? Okay, yeah. Or you can get a Fascinating Rhythm. Okay. Or you can get them at Divine Glow, which is at the okay. Heritage Muse. I'm giving you a whole tour of Nanaimo, well, right? To get thing. your tickets. Right? <laughs> Because not everybody's all in the same spot. That's right, that's right. Uh, well, they sound like wonderful events. It's a lot of work, and we just come out and support it. You'll have a lot of fun. Bring out the kid in you. And the I date again? I love dressing up. The 26th of September. Excellent. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shalima. I'm so pleased that you came. Thank you. And now I'm, we are going to the main set with Matt. <laughs> All right, thank you thank very, you. very much, Anna. Thank you very much, Shalema, as well, for being down here at the Shock TV studios again, loving here about these festivals and events. And also, speaking of Frozen, our director, Todd Jones, actually won the Shock TV costume contest last year with his rendition of Elsa. So congratulations, uh, Todd Jones, from that. Never looked so good as a blonde. Yeah, you see, there are applause, there are back. <laughs> so. <laughs>
All right, from Frozen to, uh, to Thawed Heart, some wonderful stuff. Uh, very happy to welcome back to the Shock TV studios again for we're talking the third, fourth, hundredth time. I don't know, it's always great to have you here. Sydney Bannon, the Executive Director of the United Way, Central Northern Vancouver Island. If I got the title right, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much, Matt. We're glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. Exactly. I'm mean, a big fan of the United Way and the work it does. I want to get into that as well as uh, some of the new campaign uh, stuff coming up. But just a quick question for yourself. What is it that you enjoy about working with the United Way? Well, you know, you read the newspaper every morning, you look at the news, and you see stories of great trauma or sadness, child poverty issues, literacy issues, homelessness. You know what? I get up every day, I go to work, and I'm with a great committed staff, hundreds of volunteers, and thousands of donors who work together to do this magical thing, which is solving social issues in our, in our local community on Vancouver Island. So I, I say to my kids, you know, I get up and I go and meet with donors. I drink tea, I talk about what uh, is really meaningful in the community, and there's this magical thing that happens. People donate, and we solve problems and help people, so can't get better than that. Exactly. There's something very powerful about knowing every day you're at work, for you and all the staff, that you're making a real difference. Exactly. And yeah. I, looked, I looked on the, um, your website there, and it said, I guess there was over 60 organizations or so that the That's United Way right. helps in, in this area. So yep. just maybe speak a little bit about the breadth of, of who does who does the United Way help? Yeah, so this year we're funding 61 programs, 33 of them in Central Island, and actually 15 new programs this year. So we really put out a call out, said, what are the leading issues, trends, what are the problems we've got to solve? And so a couple of the new programs we're funding are Forward House in Parksville, the Kids for Kids program at Georgia Avenue School, so helping kids, vulnerable kids who maybe don't have a place to go to hang after school. Uh, some of our longtime uh, community partners, obviously, are Hospice, Haven, those kids that go need a mentor at Big Brothers, Big Sisters, the uh, teen uh, program at uh, Boys and Girls Club is a real popular one. So, you know, when you give your donation to United Way, it really is funding a whole range of programs right here locally. I know that United Way as well has been one of the organizations involved with the um, uh, Let's see, uh, sorry, the Vital Signs yeah. uh, survey that's been done along with the Nanaimo Foundation, yep. VAU, yep. that yeah. goes and, yeah. and, and so I, I just, from that experience, I know there's been a new survey done, so what are some of the real key areas, or are there key areas that uh, the United Way and other folks have really keyed on with, in regards to this region? Yeah, homelessness obviously is a key piece, and Gord Fuller was here, he sits on a committee with me as well. One of the things we've got launched, just started September 1st, is our new Housing First project. So it used to be you put, you know, homeless folks, put them in transition houses, uh, shelters. Now we're moving on and it's getting them straight into market rent apartments and supporting them to stay housed. So our, we've got 10 people that we're going to house between them in the next six months. That's one of our newest programs. I mean there's a whole range of issues. Uh, child mental health is a big issue. So we're funding a lot of issues around teen suicide, anti-bullying obviously, and just isolation for teens. There's a new Gay Barola program we're funding, the Hope Center, and that's about kids from Gay Barola Island who aren't necessarily, they're coming to Nanaimo to attend high school, but there's a lot of dropout rate. So we're funding a program to help those kids on, uh, from Gabriel Island stay in school. So teen, teen mental health is a big issue that we're funding across our agencies. So yeah, very powerful stuff. I know one of the yeah. key ways um, you like to get the message out about these programs help is by putting on annual kickoff breakfasts. Yes. And uh, two breakfasts coming up, one in the yep. Comox Valley, one in the yep. Nanaimo. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, the name of the campaign and uh, yeah, what's going to be uh, spoken about at these breakfasts. Okay, so this year's campaign is Together We Are Possibility. One of the things I have to say is last year we tried to do a healthy breakfast, the yogurt, the muffins, all that kind of stuff. Everybody <laughs> said, forget it, bring back bacon and eggs. So you come to our kickoff breakfast. We've got one in Comox on September 17th, and we've got one down at, or up at Woodgrove Center on the 18th. So next week, hope you'll come. Please come. Tickets are 20 bucks. You can buy them on our website. Uh, but the kickoff breakfast really is a chance. We get about 300 of our supporters, actually close to 400 last year in Nanaimo, and we come together, and it's really about celebrating the, the agencies we fund, our donors, thanking our corporate donors. So, yeah, I hope you'll come out. Have some bacon. <laughs> Never say no to bacon, that's for sure. Yeah. I know, again, uh, it's, it's a bit early, it's 7 a.m. for both of these breakfasts, but yes. um, tell us a bit about the spirit, sort of what happens at these, other than eating some bacon and eggs, what can people expect or do? Yeah, so we've got a new video that's just being launched next week, so we'll be showing the new video. We've got about 60 people from our communities. You'll recognize a lot of the folks, politicians, donors, on the video, so we, we'll be uh, showing that for the first time. We really, it's a big schmooze fest. It really is a lot of fun. We just, it's, it's like a family. United Way donors
donors, supporters, it's a couple hundred people we get together and we're just talking about, okay, this year we got to raise over a million bucks again. How are we going to do it? We do it in under 11 weeks. And so really it is a big party to say, we're, we can do this. Like, everybody together, we can do this. So we hope they'll come out. And thank you very much to Wood Grove Centre because they donate the money to cover the food, they donate the space. Uh, and uh, Wood Grove Chrysler, of course, we usually have the car in the mall. Not many people get to drive the car in the mall. I do. Anyways, we, uh, Wood Grove Chrysler, thank to, thanks to the Hayes brothers, they donate the car and we use that for the whole campaign. We're out doing our work. So. Cool. I, must, I must admit, yeah, driving the car through the mall would be a bit of a nice perk. Yeah, now, yeah. If you get eating you, bacon, driving the car, yeah. it's all good. <laughs> if you convince them now to fill up uh, the big clock, water clock there with some punch, more exactly. punch, orange juice. Exactly, yeah, be really I think that'd be so. good too. Awesome, so thank you so much for being here. We have to wrap it up, but first, just want to uh, correct me if I'm wrong with this, but again, the two breakfasts going on uh, Thursday, September 17th at yes. the Crown Isle Golf Club in the Comox Valley. That's right. 7 a.m. for that, of course. Friday, September 18th uh, in Nanaimo, as you mentioned, at Woodgrove Center. Yeah. And uh, probably some great shopping going on after that as well. Yeah. So, and again, tickets from the website. Uh, I want to make sure you get this right again, uwcnvi.ca. Yes, and if you can't come to breakfast, please make your donation. We really need your help, and it's campaign targets just over a million again this year. So come to the website, make your donation, press that button. Perfect. Yeah. Great stuff, wonderful stuff. Thank you again, Cindy, for being here. Really thanks appreciate Thanks very it. much for your time, and awesome. thanks to everybody on the show. Really Perfect. appreciate it. Awesome. Look forward to having back in. All right, so now we're going to turn things back over to Anna. I think she has another uh, festival to tell us about here. So, Anna, over to you. Hi. Do, and this time we're going over to the Pacific Coast. Today my guest is uh, Mark Penny and he is the president of the Pacific Rim Arts Society. Is That's that right? Correct. Yes, it is. <laughs> Welcome. It's a mouthful. Thank it you. was a long trip for you too to come from Ukula. Uh, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> over the mountains, uh, it's a bit of a trip, but it's always Beautiful. nice to go into town. <laughs> now you do, you're having an event and it's called the Cultural Heritage Festival. Cultural Heritage Festival, and the four theme years running. is all about surfing. This year the theme is surfing, surfing the, the West, West Coast. Coast. And uh, as you probably know, Tofino is uh, one of the few places in Canada to surf. And uh, we have a uh, a long-standing culture uh, that really started uh, back in the uh, uh, early 60s okay. and um, there's been some surfers uh, who came up and were really pioneers. Uh, during the 60s there was a, a lot of uh, the hippie movement uh, gravitated towards Tofino because of the climate and the beaches yeah, and the uh, <laughs> it's of course uh, beautiful any time of year is, yeah. um, and at one point there was a lot of people who actually lived on the beach there so wow. uh, out of that uh, many of the families have maintained a tradition of, of surfing and the kids uh, enjoy it as a recreation. Uh, of course, other parts of Canada gravitate to hockey because they can make an ice rink in their backyard. They can, uh, yeah. We don't have that luxury, but we do have uh, beautiful waves. We are surrounded by the ocean. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. And so when is this event happening? Uh, this year, the festival is uh, September 19th through 27th. 27th. And um, in the previous years, as well as this year, we always have an opening ceremony at the Quisitus Visitor Centre. And that uh, sounded really interesting, so please tell our, our viewers a little bit about that. It's wonderful. Um, part of what we do with the Art Society is we try to um, observe and participate in uh, authentic traditional protocols. So um, we don't just want to pay tribute to the Ukulit First Nations and the other uh, First Nations in the area. Uh, we want to actually uh, participate fully. And um, so we have a tradition of inviting an elder or in some cases the chief to come and speak uh, openly to the honor. public. It really is a privilege. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, their tradition is, uh, is really amazing. Um, there's uh, a traditional greeting and there's uh, songs that are sung and uh, welcoming and people um, uh, speak of their family and, and where they come from and um, so even as a visitor you really feel as though you're you're part of something you're special. Part of it. That would right be great. It, yeah. And that's a full day ceremony, like a, a yep. full day event? Yep, the first day on that's the, the first day, uh, right. I believe the opening ceremony will be on the 20th this year. Right. Our festival actually starts with um, the Brewweilers Kids Surf Competition. <laughs> and uh, we have a few surf competitions. <laughs> we had, kids are surfing. The kids are Even surfing, uh, yep. Uh, they, they take to it right away and, uh, you know, kids are pretty brave. They'll, they'll get out there and, and paddle into it. Um, 
but uh, a little bit of surfing <laughs> will make you very tired and hungry. And hungry. Uh, so lots of good food and stuff to take in and uh, get in off of the, the cold water. Oh. Enjoy some, uh, some artwork. Um, each year we have a number of professional artists from all over the Central Island who uh, participate in our shows either as members of our society. And it's really not that far. I mean, it's a doable day trip. It's an absolutely doable day trip. Um, very easy to make it there and back. Uh, if you're driving out uh, on Highway 4, take your time. Uh, there's lots to see. It's, it's very exciting. It's been described as the most beautiful uh, drive in Canada, uh, says the Ottawa citizen. It is, uh, but um, certainly it's one of the most memorable. Excellent. So I'd like to uh, in, certainly invite everybody to come out and to see the artwork and, and try surfing. We should all be coming out. If right, you've right, never right. tried surfing, come on out. There's lots of places you can take on lessons. On my bucket list. <laughs> definitely. Put it on your list. It is. Definitely. Thank you so much, Mark. Now, if we want to contact you, we have your website. PacificRimArts.ca. Excellent. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your coming all this way. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you there. And we're going to Matt. Matt, Matt, Matt. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anna, Anna, Anna. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Mark as well for getting on to the show, telling us good work. And I definitely think uh, Anna learning to surf might be an excellent segment for an upcoming uh, episode of The Shaw. Just write into our producer and uh, tell that's what's got to happen. Anyway, so far on the show on Shaw TV, which you're watching, hope you're enjoying it, we have met uh, Dave Needs from Gabe Energy. And I think it's kind of funny with a name like Dave Needs, maybe he should have been a bread maker. Dave needs, needs, come on, come on, that's, lot. okay, good, there, yeah, I see Raymond laughed, he's wearing a Montreal Canadiens hat, so I like him. Anyways, Dave needs from Gabe Energy, back to talk about more uh, wonderful energy stuff, he'll be back on the near the close of the show. I also want a big shout out to uh, Gord Fuller and Dennis Osterkamp, who came down here on behalf of the Nanaimo 710 Club, talking about some of the activities with the club. We've met our musical guests, uh, Tora and Alex, and they'll be back in a moment as well. I'll also talk to Shalem McGant about the Art de Carnaval Festival, as you just saw a little while ago, and of course, Mark Penny, we just met a moment before, after now. Also, big shout out to Signe and thanks for coming down to the show again. Great to talk about the United Way's upcoming campaign. Together we are a possibility and all the wonderful uh, kickoff breakfast happening with that. Coming up later in the show, Kate Bergen is going to be here. Excited for that. She's been talking to George Plumley about WordPress and some of the amazing ways that can be a great spot for your blogging action. Also, want to back, as mentioned, with Dave and Anna to talk more about Gabe Energy as well. But I think it's time for a bit of a music. I think we're going to go, so we're going to pass it over to uh, Alex Wiggett and Tora Lee. They're going to play a little song for us right now called Brother. It's on the show on Shaw TV. One long drag of a cigarette Ashes fall to the ground Teeth are chattering and the rain's pitter pattering And not a soul hears a sound Cars drive by day and night With fright and dirty looks The sun's too hot and the moon's too cold In the alleys and nooks And how does it feel? Be out on the streets What do you dream When you're trying to fall asleep My brother It's been a long, long time And I can't get you off my mind Brother I gotta let you go Jet black hair gone silver and gray Sinking into time sands Constantly weathering Skin keeps on weathering No work for this carpenter's hands Nickel Street didn't have any hope Just a down jacket and quilt Search those dark eyes for a little emotion And there ain't no feelings of guilt And how does it feel To be out on your own Do you miss anyone? Are you truly alone? My brother It's been a long, long time I can't get you off of my mind, brother. I don't want to leave you behind, but I got to let you go. When I was
was young, just wanted to be like you. Every day, I wanted to be near you. I couldn't imagine my life without you. Now you're gone. Those thoughts are in the past, my brother. That is Brother, an original tune by Alex Wicket, accompanied on harmony by Tora Lee. This is the show on Shaw TV. I'm Kay Bergen. Glad to be hanging out here in the studio, a little bit out of my element recently. We're going to talk about WordPress and WordPress security today. Most of us have heard of it. Many of us use it on a daily basis. George Plumley is a WordPress expert. He's published three books on the topic. The first one, WordPress 24-Hour Trainer, now in its third edition. Following that was an ebook called 100 Beginner WordPress Tips uh, that was published and pushed out. I don't know if that's the right lingo, directly from WordPress. We'll find out if I'm right on that in a sec. And George's latest book is Teach Yourself Visually WordPress. And from what I understand, all of this started with a tweet? Started with a tweet. I had just gotten a Twitter account. I didn't even really know what it was and back how long in. Ago was this now? 2009, okay. way in the old days. Right, 2009, way back then. 2009, <laughs> and two days later, I saw a tweet, and it said, "Does anybody do WordPress videos? We need to do a book." Right. I answered the tweet, and in two days, I had a book deal. Wow. It was crazy. And you've been a Twitter fan ever since. You know. <laughs> I haven't been on Twitter ever since, but we won't go into that. But you don't have time. You've got enough books out. I know. I'm so busy with WordPress. <laughs> Who's got time for Twitter, right? There's, there's been a lot of um, talk in the news lately, a lot of headlines about WordPress and security and yes. accounts getting hacked. And maybe we should back up just a little bit. And what does it mean? What does it look like when a WordPress account is hacked? Well, you figure there's 70 million or so sites running WordPress around the world. So it's a big target for the hackers. Mm -hmm. So a hacker either wants to deface it, you know, put up some sign or symbol or send you off to a really nasty and, website. And for what purpose? What are the no, hackers getting out of it? They get their kicks. They get their kicks out of okay. it. And so the more they can, if they can do 20 million sites hit, they'd right. be pretty big in the community. So they can brag about how Bragging good they rights, are. Yeah. Okay. The other thing they do, and probably the more common thing, is they inject malware into your files and your database. You don't even know it's there. And it's running in the background, and they're using your server to do nasty things. Okay. So that's what that's what they're up to. And it's not about about hitting a big, well-known site, as you mentioned. It's about the number, the no, sheer it's volume. No, just of volume. What doing. All of us, basic small business people and personal sites. Right. If they and would can you know them, necessarily if you've been breached? If that's the term. Sometimes you wouldn't know. Right. That's and that's why keeping secure is so important. Right. And you've got sites. three ways. Three key tips. Well, there's two main ways they get in. The first way is there's a vulnerability. There's a hole in the software, and mm -hmm. they find their way in, right? So yeah. we have to block it, and we update our software. And you see this all the time with Adobe uh, Reader and, and Windows. Everything gets updated. WordPress right. the same way. Right. Keep your site updated. The trick, though, is to also keep your plugins and your themes updated. People mm -hmm. forget about that. Mm -hmm. Plugins and themes are little bits of software you add on to WordPress. 
they have vulnerabilities too. Mm -hmm. So block the vulner vulnerabilities. That's a tough one. All right, one. easy to say. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to update okay. all the time. We're going to go through two more quickly. We're good. Real fast, yes. Right the down. other way they get in is people use the word password as their password. Right. Use a strong password. And the other thing and you want to do... And not the word strong not, password. Not the word strong <laughs> password, exactly. The other thing you want to do is block how many times someone can fail to get in. Right. So these are called login lockdowns. Right. So what these guys do is they'll hit like 100 times a minute. They'll yeah. try to log in, and it shuts your site down. Right. And the third... That is, the, sorry, that that is, is the, third. the third. The third, okay. Good password and then login lockdown. Okay. That's the key. Excellent. Now, we, we've just, just barely touched the surface, Scratched. and there's an opportunity coming up to glean a lot more of your knowledge and event taking place mm -hmm. at the Nanaimo North, Town, North Branch, beautiful branch of the library. It's great place, um, yeah. Date, time, what are people going to do? Thursday get? the 24th at 6.30 p.m. Bring your laptops, bring your tablets, and you can work along with me. I'll have a big screen there, and mm. I'll show you how to do things with WordPress and answer awesome. questions. So. Excellent. I think I should be there. <laughs> Excellent. Because I only understood about a, that <laughs> yeah, much right. of what Come all of that meant. Learn some more. Thank you, George, for coming Thank in you. today. We're going to throw things back over now to Anna with more from Gabe Energy. And we are back with our solar panel and Dave. And now Dave's already started mounting some things up here. So can you explain what you've, you've done in our little break yeah, that we okay. had? <laughs> well, again, it's a 13 millimeter wrench. That's a Torx. <laughs> that's all you needed. So these are the feet, these are the rails. You can imagine the roof is sitting like this now. Okay. And so there's two, okay. these two clips on the back, so the whole thing is mounted together with these clips. And then the next thing that you do, this is the magic box. It's yeah, you were saying that's there, where right? we left off, right. was that the okay. magic box. <laughs> and then there's a trunk cable that runs along and carries the, so the, the voltage comes, question, okay. yeah? What is the magic box? It's called an inverter, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. It, 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 it's paired with each module has its own inverter. Okay. And it takes the direct current voltage from the panel and changes it into AC voltage, which is compatible with your house current. Okay. Exactly the same. It's 240 volts, right? So then the trunk cable runs along and picks up. You can have as many as 17 of these in a row. Of panels. Panels, you're right. About. Right, okay. And then that comes to a junction box. Right, okay. And then what the electrician will do for you is. Oh, I see, okay. Go from the uh, junction box down to your. This will all be connected. Would all this, be connected this will all be connected right? up. Okay, yeah. So this goes to a 240 volt breaker in your, in your load center in your home. So the, the message here is how simple it is. You've got a module, you've got an inverter, you've got a cable, a junction box, and right into your home panel. That's wow. it. And the other thing about the way solar has come these days is it's plug and play, right? So the inverter, you just snap these cables in place. Like that. Like that. This guy plugs into here, if I get it right backwards, like that. And as soon as you throw that breaker, you've got a power plant. Wow. That's it. There's no complicated uh, layout. There's no complicated conduits or sizing of systems. You can start with one. You can start with five. You can start with 15. And you said you could go up to 17. Well, there's 17 in a group, but I've got, I've got systems now running 102 modules. Wow. There's one in 126 we're designing right now. You can go, you can go up, you, there's some of these that are 4,000 in a group. You can go as, as big as you want. Now, does it take any battery or anything no, at no, all? No, no, because this is hooked back directly to your house current. Okay. And that's hooked to the grid. Okay. So the grid is, the grid is in effect your big battery. Now, solar power, does it have to be sunny to store the energy? Yes, that's the thing. When they, these are called grid dependent. Okay. So when the grid goes down, the inverter shuts down within a microsecond. And that's a federal regulation for safety because you don't want power going back out on the grid where there's a power outage or there's wires down or whatever. Right, so, right. So that's uh, the way it has to be. You can, we can do standalone. You can do hybrid systems, which have batteries as well and to carry you through. Can you use it just for your home or can you use it for other things? Well, uh, with, like your garage or? Well, wherever you want, wherever you want. Anywhere. Wherever you want power. I'm doing as long this. as you have power. Yeah, I'm doing, a, I'm doing a sauna right now. There's a grower in Ontario who's doing 4,000 for a greenhouse. I've wow. got uh, berry growers over here in the island. They've got 100 panels running their berry picking operation. So you can go any scale you want up and down, right? Well, that's great. Yeah. 
So again, like I say, the main thing here is the plug and play nature of it. This can be done by anybody who's fairly, uh, is that blinking? Look at that. It's what blinking. that's telling me is that that, <laughs> that studio what, what, light is strong enough it's strong to give power. The reason it's blinking wow. red is because it's, doesn't, it's not hooked to the grid. Okay. Had I known that light was going to, these panels are very sensitive. When people ask you, does it have to be bright sun? Well, that's not a particularly that's bright light yeah. compared to the sun. So what it did, it sensed that there was power coming from the module into the inverter, but it's blinking red because it's not hooked to the grid. If we had 220 volts on here, this would blink green and you're good to go. So actually the power system here is running. That's right pretty now. awesome. Did you get a shot Considering of that Considering there's no sun in here, that's pretty yeah. great. So you don't need oh, like direct sunlight. You don't need no bright sun. Yeah, yeah. It, it, these things start collecting power about 6.30 in the morning right now and they go right through until 6.30 right, at night. That's right, because yeah. our time is Yeah, about 12 hours. In the winter time. I have a, have a peak in the middle of the day. Now, do tell us your, your website because you said it's a very interactive website. Well, it's in, info at gabeenergy.com. It's, it's, uh, it's got all kinds of information about panels, modules, about the industry in general. Uh, lots of contact information, lots of articles, whatever. And of about solar always, energy. Yeah, too, yeah totally. Right? How solar yeah. works and what it's all about. And again, our mission is to help people get involved and to take the mystery out of it. It's a it great really is mission. Not, not, very, not really that mysterious, you know. I love that mission. That's okay. awesome. Great. Well, I really thank the opportunity to be well, here today. Well, thank you, Dave, yeah, for coming and bringing, bringing yeah. a solar panel and showing this. So please uh, check us out and give us a call anytime. I will. This Thank has you been, so much. This has been really, really it's cool. It's great, I isn't say, it? The only blinks in my house is my VCR, which I still haven't programmed yet. So <laughs> to get this program, yeah, that's pretty rad. Well, that's pretty cool. I I that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah no, great. I'm really, Thank I'm you. really impressed it. with that. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah, yeah. great. Cool. And I mean, great to also, again, to have your talking about alternative forms of energy, solar energy. I mean, anyone that really knows, looking in the extent of all the energy we're trying to extract from the ground, mm -hmm. it's created sort of a messy coal slaw. Yeah. Coal, coal slaw. Oh. All right. What? What? Come on. we got to put down the coal slaw because, I mean, it's, it might, if we do it in the Arctic, it might lead to the extinction of the great white solar bears. All right. You know those bears from up north? Anyhow. Oh, you know Michael Behrens? He's usually here with his magic moments, you know. He was actually at home working on some new tricks. And I went actually to his place the other day. He was going to show me a new trick uh, involving some tarot cards. And unfortunately, while he was showing me, the power went out. And he says, well, I can't do, I can't do this, this trick anymore. And I said, what's the problem, Michael? You don't have a tarot scene lamp? Oh. Tarot scene. Oh. oh, okay. Well, that's not liking by the guy. <laughs> Come on. Oh, but I should let you know, of course, the federal election is coming up, so make sure you decide who you're going to vote for because that's going to amp up their chances, as it were. Oh, Anyways, boy, well, this show is such a gas, isn't it? I tell you. Anyways, well, before this train goes off the frack and hydroplanes across the racing circuit, I should probably <laughs> wrap the show up to a close. I do want to thank all of the staff and the volunteers behind the camera, in front of the scenes, all over the place, with a special big shout out to Kate Bergen, our brand new executive producer of the show. <laughs> oh, look at that. A round of applause. Come on. Do that. Great stuff. So again, one of the originators of the show. Now back, we're going to the show along with uh, Joni, our producer, to get all the segments together. So wonderful stuff there. If you want to know more of the show, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash the show on Shaw. You can also find previous episodes on the uh, Shaw TV, Center Vancouver Island YouTube site. Check that out. And also find more information on Twitter as well for the Shaw Center Vancouver Island Twitter. If you do have some uh, story ideas, if you know someone should be on the show, maybe it could be you yourself, or you want to volunteer, because it's pretty much a volunteer-run organization, just drop Kate Bergen an email. It's kate.bergen. K A I T dot Bergen at S J R B dot C A. Be glad to help you out and love to hear about some more ideas. All right, so I'm going to go hang out with Todd now and watch a bit of a frozen marathon. Before that, we do have one more song to give you again. Thanks to our musical guests, Tori Lee and Alex Wicked, playing a little song, a little duet called Afraid of Love. Thank you so much for watching the show right here on Shaw TV. Pretty bird let fly 
Small mistakes the moment breaks The vaguest of replies And I'll find my way on my own How could I have known? I'm afraid of love Afraid of love I'm afraid of the unknown I'm scared of you Scared of you Scared of a hurt you might Stop the fall I messed up good this time In the desert Hands and knees Searching for some wine I looked out In the distance Eyebrows raised from far Pretty bird Come back to me I've, Oh I've had a change of heart Give me space Oh give me breath Racing down to earth Reaching speeds I've never sped Headed for rebirth Tough to trust but so much lust Forgiveness is divine Pluck my feathers, cage me up I'll take that glass of wine But don't run from me this time 